Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Now, as most of you know, February is known for three very special events. Valentine's Day, Black History Month, and of course, the Lunar or Chinese New Year. Speaking of which, next to African Americans, I support Chinese folks very deeply. You see, I think they're very interesting people due to their ancient history and culture. Also, can you believe that they actually made clothing from paper? No, really, it's true. And nowadays, I really feel bad that they were the first victims of COVID-19, no thanks to these pests. Darn you, COVID welder. Anyway, I would like to continue my support by blogging four Chinese-related movies this month. Now, for this episode, we're going to start by looking at a Japanese film. I promise this is relevant. Now, what I'll be talking about today will be from Ranma One Half. For those who are unfamiliar, Ranma One Half is a Japanese manga series written and illustrated by Rumiko Takahashi, who also did the Inuyasha manga, the story revolves around a teenage boy named Rama Saotome, who has trained in martial arts ever since his early childhood. As a result of an accident during a training journey, he is cursed to become a girl when splashed with cold water, while hot water changes him back into a boy. Throughout the series, Rama seeks out a way to rid himself of his curse, while his friends, enemies, and many fiancés constantly hinder and interfere. The manga was then adapted into an anime series created by Studio Dean and has aired from 1989 to 1992 for a total of seven seasons and 143 episodes. Now, to be perfectly honest, folks, I never actually seen any of the Ranma One Half episodes or read the manga, mainly due to the fact that this anime series features some really weird inappropriate stuff like innuendo and gender bending but at the same time it features martial arts and some over-the-top comedy anyway you guys are probably wondering why am i talking about ranma one half and what does it have to do with china well the movie i'll be vlogging is not only the very first ranma one half movie but it's also a movie that i've known about ever since the late 1990s. So, let's get started. Released in Japan on November 2nd, 1991, the movie is Ranma One Half the Movie, Big Trouble in Nikonron, China. And now, on for the plot of the movie. It's just another day at the Tendo Anything Goes Martial Arts Training Hall. That is, until a strange girl named Lychee and her giant elephant Jasmine arrived to settle a score with martial arts master Haposai. Apparently, a very long time ago, Haposai gave Lychee's great-grandmother half of a legendary scroll guaranteed to bring happiness to whoever was holding it. The woman of Lychee's family had been waiting for three generations now, and the prince still not has arrived. But of course, the moment Lychee accidentally lets the scroll out of her hands, Prince Kirin, who happens to be the leader of the Seven Lucky Gods martial artists, has arrived. Only now, it's the reluctant fiancé, Akane Tendo, who is holding the scroll. And the long-awaited Kirin is only too ready to sweep his lucky bride off her feet. Ranma Satome and the rest of his friends currently have no choice but to follow Prince Kirin's majestic flying barge all the way to Nikonron, China to rescue Akane where they find themselves in a showdown with the seven lucky gods of martial arts. So, what are my thoughts on this movie? Well, ever since I watched it online during the summer of 2017, I realized that this is not a kid's anime film, due to the fact that it includes over-the-top weirdness, adult profanity, as well as some innuendo. But at the same time, it's a really funny movie. But to further explain why I think so, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, there's not a lot of trivia to talk about, 
But all I can say is that the movie's English title is obviously a parody of the 1986 film Big Trouble in Little China, which I may want to blog next year if I'm not too busy. And while I'm not technically a Rama fan, this film particularly debuted between the episodes Ryoga Inherits the Sayatome School and Tendo Family Goes to the Amusement Park. Also, I must confess, the reason why I've known about this movie ever since my elementary age during the late 90s is basically because I was introduced to it due to the ending trailers on the Pokemon Kanto VHSs. And while the trailer was narrated by Akane, it didn't really show any advertising captions, which really made it hard to track this movie down. And I didn't watch it until summer 2017. Plus, the only person who I know about who reviewed this movie before me was Isaac the Media Hunter, which was way back in 2010, during the time when his avatar used to look like this. Anyway, in my opinion, the Japanese animation looks pretty good for its time, due to this being an early 90s anime film, and despite some inappropriate moments that make me feel a bit uncomfortable, the most memorable scenes in this movie is the chase scene during the beginning of the film, and the fight scenes where Ranma and the gang fight through each gate of the Seven Lucky Gods martial arts while trying to rescue Akane. Also, I think some of the comedy is so over the top that it really cracks me up. Another thing that I like in this movie is the amazing end credits song, It's Love, performed by Rabbit. And trust me when I say that that song has been stuck in my head ever since I saw the trailer during the late 90s. And nowadays... I wonder if I can buy it from iTunes, if possible. And now, let's move on to the characters and the voice actors. And let me remind you, I'm only going to look at the English cast. The title character, Ranma Sayatome, is voiced by Sarah Strange. However, as a girl, he's voiced by Venus Terzo. Ranma is a 16-year-old martial artist who can be pretty petty, arrogant, and disrespectful as he is prone to bragging and tossing insults. Despite these flaws, Ranma retains a moral center throughout the series, and he has little to no problems helping those in need. Plus, I like the fact that Ranma never considers himself as a hunk. Also, I think Ranma's martial arts skills are really excellent, and I think he's pretty good at counterattacking his opponents. However, there is one scene in this movie that feels pretty awkward, which happens to be the moment where he tells Kieran that Akane is his fiance while he's in his girl form. Also, Ranma is terrified of cats, and he can be pretty much the butt of most violence, which happens throughout the series. Next, we have Ranma's reluctant fiance, Akane Tendo, voiced by Miriam Sorois who voiced the beautiful doe, Zoe, in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the movie from 1998. Now, the reason why Akane is engaged to Ranma is because her family chose her to be engaged to him and carry on the Tendo family dojo. Anyway, in my opinion, while she and Ranma have a bit of a habit of bickering with each other, Akane is a beautiful tomboy, she's an excellent cook, and she also has great martial arts skills. However, her personality can be compassionate and helpful at times, but it can also swing from violent and hot-tempered, especially when she hits Ranma with a huge mallet and calls him a jerk. Which, believe me when I say, gives me the incentive not to get on any woman's bad side. Because... I would never want to get assaulted by one, believe me. Next up, we have the perverted Haposai, voiced by Paul Dobson, who voiced Miyoga and Naraku in the Inuyasha series. This guy is the founder and grandmaster of the Anything Goes martial arts. To me, Haposai can be a real nuisance and a dirty old man, like during the beginning of the movie where he's seen stealing women's clothing. Yuck. 
However, Hapusai has a pretty twisted backstory. You see, when he was 18, he came across a strange procession where he saw a young maiden who he learned was going to be sacrificed so the scrolls of the seven lucky gods can become one again. This news angered Hapusai that he decides to steal half of the scroll, but he gets severely injured during the attempt, leaving him with only enough strength to crawl ashore, where he then meets a young Jasmine and Lychee's great-grandmother, whom Hapusai passes the scroll to, which nowadays Hapusai regrets, for if he hadn't taken the scroll, Akane would not have been kidnapped. Next we come to the people who joined Ranma on his rescue mission. There's Akane's dad, Son, voiced by David Kay, who voiced Sashomaru in Inuyasha, and just recently voiced Arashem in the MCU's Eternals. Ranma's dad, Genma, voiced by Robert O. Smith, Shampoo, voiced by Kathy Wesselek, aka Spike the Dragon, and Mayor Mayor from My Little Pony Friendship with Magic, Tatawaki Kuno, voiced by Ted Cole, Muse, voiced by Brad Swale, and Ryoga Hibiki, voiced by Michael Donovan. In my opinion, these guys are decent supporting characters while helping to rescue Akane. However, the most memorable characters would have to be Genma, Shampoo, Kuno, and Ryoga. And now let's move on to the new characters, starting with Lychee, voiced by Diana Wong, whom I remember as Aria Blaze from My Little Pony Equestria Girls Rainbow Rocks. Lychee is a young woman who is the latest descendant of her family who was entrusted to look after the Scroll of Luck in order to marry the leader of the Seven Lucky Gods Martial Arts and complete the ritual to join the two scrolls together. She initially arrived in Japan to confront Hapusai, but when Kiran arrives and kidnaps Akane, she becomes heartbroken and angry. However, she does join Ranma and his friends to prevent Kiran's wedding to Akane after Ranma returns her sentiment. In my opinion, while her voice is kind of annoying, I think Lychee is a very sympathetic character who desperately wants to be back with Kiran. Plus, her backstory was very, very tragic. Plus, I think Lychee's elephant companion, Jasmine, is a very loyal and strong character. Last but not least, we come to the main villain, Kieran, leader of the Seven Lucky Gods Martial Arts, voiced by John Payne. Kieran travels to the Tendo Dojo in order to meet the owner of the other half of the Scroll of Luck, so as both halves can be rejoined. However, when he arrives, Akane is accidentally holding the scroll, so Kieran believes her to be the owner instead of the rightful owner, Lychee. In my opinion, Kieran can be pretty stubborn, but he's also a very formidable opponent with speed, reflexes, and control. But his fighting style is hampered by the fact that he is dependent upon holding a bowl of rice in one hand at all times, while using them to create a spray of needle-like projections and, of course, he's an expert in defense, using long formal chopsticks to snare his opponent's limb or weapon in a vice-like grip. Also, like the mayor from the Powerpuff Girls, Kieran is a pickle monster. The rest of the Lucky Gods consist of Bishamoten, also voiced by Robert O. Smith, a fierce, massively bearded, armor-clad warrior and an expert with a trident, Diosuke and Daikosuke, voiced by Michael and Paul Dobson, identical twin youths obsessed with the board game Go, who can be distinguished only by the color they prefer to play. Wu, voiced by Terry Klassen, a huge man with nearly impenetrable skin and very little brain power. Monlon, voiced by Linda Boyd, the only woman in the group, a scantily clad musician who wields her lute as a weapon, and Ibiten, voiced by Nick Misura, a large-eared dwarf who wields a fishing pole as his weapon. And now let's move on my final words. Overall, Ranma One Half the Movie, Big Trouble in Nikonron, China, is a really hilarious anime film. Yes, I'm not into the film's manga or anime series yet, compared to other anime like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Speed Racer, or Inuyasha, 
Still, due to the five years of getting to know this movie, the humor was played out nicely, and the characters were pretty interesting. Ranma and Akane were pretty similar to Ash and Misty or Inuyasha and Kagome. The Japanese animation is pretty good too. The fight scenes were fun, and some of the voice acting had a few hiccups. However, I would not recommend this movie for younger audiences due to the minor adult language, innuendo, and gender bending. But if you're a Ranma fan, you should look into this movie. And at the same time, I should check out the OVAs and the other Ranma movies which are featured on this Blu-ray and see how they compare. Anyway, I give this movie an 81% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in again next time as we move away from Nikon Ron and on to the Kingdom of Wei Ling. Mustang Power. Thank you.